And there it is, a clean hole straight through the steel plate. What's up guys, Redness Reviews here with you again, and we're gonna do something on the channel that's a little bit different from my normal content. This is going to be an ammunition video. I'm sure any of you who actually pay attention to the mill syrup market are aware of this ammunition that has recently come into the country. It is literally on every website for sale right now, and I could not resist picking up my own batch of it. This is our World War II dated German steel core armor piercing ammunition. I bought mine from Century Arms because at the time they had the lowest price. I want to say this 300 round battle pack came in at like $225. So what's that, like 70 cents a round? On some other websites, I think it's coming in more like a dollar a round. But this ammo, I wouldn't consider shooting ammo. This ammunition is true World War II German surplus. And as we know, anything German World War II is worth quite a bit these days and will only be worth more in the future. So I consider this ammo to be a collector grade ammunition and it's probably worth more collecting than it is shooting, even though the price per round isn't all that terrible. So here's our outside box. It is coming apart just a little bit. So unfortunately mine's not in the best shape, but it has this very neat cloth carry handle. It has a label down here on the bottom of what kind of ammo it is. As we'll see, that same kind of label is on every individual box. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear there's any good way to get this outside sleeve off without severely damaging the box itself. So perhaps we're a little bit lucky that my box is already split on the edge here. These come 15 rounds to a box. There are 20 boxes in our 300 round battle pack. This label here provides all the information you would want to know about this ammo. Patronin, of course, means cartridge in German. The SMK stamping, you can see right there on the right hand side, means that it is a spitzer with a metal core, designating that this is armor penetrating ammunition. That NZGW designates what kind of propellant this uses. Under that we have case manufacturing data. This ZDH88 indicates that this has a type 88 primer. Over here on the right side of the box we have information about who manufactured the bullets. Our load data is in the middle here. HLB, that's the factory that produced this ammunition in 1943. And this blue marking in the middle also indicates this ammo is AP ammo or armor penetrating ammunition. I think we've talked enough. Let's open this package up. Well, there it is right away. We can tell that our primers have a sealant on them. That's looking like pretty dang clean ammo. So this is a steel cased ammunition and that might seem a little odd to some being from the 1940s, but the Germans were sort of ahead of their time in that way, utilizing steel case ammo before most of the world did. These particular bullets are 178 grains, so that's a little bit wider than your standard 8 millimeter. I would figure that these are screaming fast rounds. Unfortunately, I did not have a chronograph to do the ammo testing that I would really like to do, so I will not be able to give you the velocities in this video, but I'm assuming it's quite a fast round. So I have my bullet puller here. Let's see if we can pull this bullet apart. It moved the bullet a little bit, but apparently these things are crimped really tight. All right, I think we finally popped it there. We most definitely did. There's our case. There's our bullet and our powder. So this powder is sort of a square, flaky powder. There is slight sign of a tiny bit of rust in here. I believe that right there and that right there is sort of a rusty flake. Other than that, it seems okay. These are lacquer coated. Steel cases, very similar to the Russian ammo that we know of today. That's our bullet. It's a boat-tailed Spitzer projectile. That's our steel core. We're going to take this over to the grinder in a minute to see if we can get a better look at the steel core. That appears to have a little bit of rust on it, maybe. And we have our head stamp, 1943 HLB. I think that is going to be lot number five. That's a lot number there. Really, this was cutting-edge bullet technology for the era. So they all seem to be in about the same condition. I mean, they basically look factory new. A couple of them have a spot or two of corrosion, but in general, I'd say they look very clean. They come from 1943, you really don't expect much from World War II ammo at this point, but this stuff seems to have been stored very well. I've never tried grinding a bullet before, but I want to get a good look at that steel core, so we're going to give this a shot. Well, that certainly wasn't the best grinding job, and this thing is most definitely not square, but we can get a pretty good look at that steel penetrator now. You can kind of see the separation of where it's placed in the bullet versus the jacket. It appears to be a very significant amount of the overall bullet weight is going to be from that steel penetrator. Well, I think now we need to head over to the range 
and see how this stuff actually shoots. Unfortunately, I don't have a German Mauser in my collection yet, so I believe we'll be shooting this with my Yugo Mauser because it has the nicest bore of any Mauser that I have. It's an eight millimeter. This will be our 1943 German eight millimeter AP ammo. We're gonna do a five shot group with this. So I'm back from the range. I was gonna do this portion of the video in front of the camera, but I am such a sweaty mess due to the sauna that it is outside, that I'm gonna spare you guys looking at my mug today. We shot 11 rounds and all 11 rounds functioned 100%, no hang fires. Everything seemed very good as far as that went. I used sort of a crude target. This ammo is corrosive. So if you're gonna shoot this ammo, you have to make sure you clean your gun thoroughly afterwards or you will get a rusty bore. So as a control sort of, I started with factory new ammunition. Now we were shooting at a distance of 50 yards, bench rested, which is something I normally don't do. I normally do my shooting offhand, but for this video, I wanted to give everything the best shot I could. So the first ammo that we shot was new factory loaded PPU ammo, and as we can see here, my point of aim was this shiny piece of tape, and we had a rather nice group just outside of the red. For a point of reference, that's the size of an eight millimeter Mauser. That PPU shooting sort of served as a warm up, and then I moved on to the group that was most important to me, and that was our German group here. So my point of aim was of course the shiny piece of tape, and directly above the point of aim is our five shot group with our German AP ammunition. Without a doubt, a better shooter could achieve a much better group than I did. That's good enough accuracy for me. Shooting iron sights, sort of crude iron sights at that with my Yugo Mauser. It has a veen hotch in the back and a barley corn in the front, so it's not the most precise sight picture. I went down to this target for another three shot group, and that ended up being these three here. Now that is a very poor group. It was also high, and that's a good like four and a half inches, something like that. At 50 yards, that's not really what I would consider good accuracy, but it's good enough. If I would have aimed a little bit low on the target, this group would just about fit in that red ring. My dad shot a two-shot group at the same point of aim. He also hit high, and that was his two-shot group there. Since I was shooting corrosive ammunition, I figured it was a good time to go ahead and try out another couple little controls of corrosive Milserp ammo. This was Czech military surplus. I picked this up from Centerfire Systems about a year ago for about 30 cents a round. It is a steel case ammo, much like the German that we're looking at now. Its head stamp is in the 1960s though, so it's a much newer ammunition. That group was actually fairly decent point of aim here. I hit high with it as well, and then I have one flyer out there. This is quality ammunition though, again, corrosive, so clean your gun afterwards. And lastly, we have probably my worst batch of military surplus ammo I have, but it actually shot fairly well and that is some Iranian surplus. This Iranian surplus ammo very commonly has hang fires, and we actually did have a hang fire in this group. This target sort of tilted sideways because I can't get it on the camera otherwise. This group is actually more at 12 o'clock, and it was a five shot group here. And you see these four are quite good, a little bit high as I've been shooting the whole day. I was actually expecting much worse than this with this ammo because it usually hang fires every round. None of these four were hang fires. It shot very good today, but I did have one hang fire in that five round group and that threw it way down here. It was sort of unexpected after the other ones were shooting good. And so I had a big time flyer on that Iranian group. Now mind you, I'm no expert marksman. I'm a decent shooter. I've been shooting all my life. For the past couple years, I haven't really been shooting for groups that much. I mainly shoot it still. So, you know, excuses, excuses. That's the group I came up with, with the ammo that we're looking at today. And I'm gonna say that is very serviceable. And who knows, if it was shot out of a different rifle, this group might be dead center. And if it was, all these rounds would be in the red circle there. And I would say that's a very decent group in my opinion. So for about 70 cents to a dollar a round, you can get some 
fairly decent quality ammunition in this batch. But I really would not recommend shooting this stuff. This is not plinking ammo, in my opinion. This ammo is from a dwindling supply from the most insane conflict the world has ever been through. And I think that it is a collectible more than anything. And I'm glad I was able to get this battle pack for my collection. As far as the armor penetrating capabilities of this goes, it's most certainly AP. My final round of the day was a round on a steel target and it punched a hole clean through. You can see daylight on the other side. It definitely gets the job done on the AP front. I only wish I would have had a chronograph for this so I could let you guys know what the velocities were looking like. Maybe in the future if I get the opportunity to do some more videos on specific ammunition, we'll make that a part of it. Well, thanks for watching guys. I truly appreciate it. Hopefully you found this video at least mildly interesting. If you bought some of this ammo, let me know down in the comments. Did you shoot any of yours and what did you think about it? It definitely gets a thumbs up for me in terms of quality and the history that goes along with it really can't be beat. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that helps us out with the Google algorithm. And as we all know, firearms related channels need all the help they can get with that algorithm because Google is not a firearms fan. For more videos, about ammunition and of course military surplus firearms make sure you subscribe to the channel because i will have weekly content moving forward thanks again for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video see you then peace and there it is a clean hole straight through a steel plate